So hello everybody, welcome to my tutorial on Dung Greed. Uh, hopefully you guys find this entertaining and helpful. And uh, yeah, so let's just jump right into it. So uh, Dung Greed is a RPG um, dungeon crawler, kind of like a bullet hell game. Uh, it's really simple, uh, you know, you just have your game start settings and quit. Um, settings, kind of, you change the music and stuff like that, nothing really important. But then uh, you can just hit game start. This is my main file over here. You got your three slots. Uh, you know, kind of like the old days where you have memory cards and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to pick slot two. Gives you a little bit of a backstory. The town as peaceful as it always was. Oh, look at all those beautiful people. Serious dungeon suddenly appeared. It swallowed anything and everything. And they just get sucked in. And it's gone. <laughs> All right, so then two weeks later, we show up on a cart. That's it. So at this point, you can either use keyboard and mouse, or I like to use a little a game controller. You walk down, and I'm pretty sure it's just going to eat us. There you go. So we get sucked into the dungeon as well. And there you go. Voice from far away. What? What is the sound of an adventurer sent from the kingdom entering a dungeon to investigate the ruined town? That's a keen sense of hearing, I tell you that. Come this way. All right. So we can move uh, with a controller. You just kind of move the right stick with a mouse. You just move the mouse. Uh, left, right, left click just to attack. Uh, right click to dash. Uh, let's see. Space is jump. A is jump on the controller. A left bumper is actually the dash. You have to be moving now. And right bumper is attack. We will also have two sets of weapons, but we'll get into that later. So you just kind of jump over these, hold down the A. I like how they say, out, hold down the A button. I can go, jump down through these little arrows, same, same old. Okay, aiming. This is actually the little tutorial, so, you know, that tells you how to open it. You can open this up with just pushing the right thing now if we actually switch back to the mouse it'll tell us v will open up our inventory so then f will open up things we got us a great sword now you can actually when you're playing with a keyboard and mouse you can just use your mouse wheel to switch back and forth now different weapons will obviously have different attributes this one the tax per second is 1.54 this one is 3.3 .3. So it is significantly faster versus that. But however, a lot of other weapons also have these willpowers of gladiator, uh, which include, increases like power and stuff like that. So uh, not not horribly important, but useful later on. You can go like this and show you the map. And it tells you here how to swap the weapon. And again, if we switch over to the mouse, uh, looks like tilt the key. That's a weird key, but okay. You can show your character stats, you know, how much strength you have, or that's your power, your defense, uh, which reduces the damage you get, of course. Critical chance makes you double your damage. Your movement speed is how you move fast to move around. You got dash power, which is how much um, percentage of your weapon damage your dash does when you hit the enemies with it. Toughness, it reduces a fixed amount of damage, which is pretty good. If you ever come across toughness, is what you really want to get, because it will just totally negate damage. Whereas defense negates a percent of the damage. Critical damage is how much it adds to it, which is 100% right now. Your attack speed. Uh, true damage is always just going to be, you know, if you have 5 true damage, it'll always hit for 5. Then uh, block is how much, um, how what like what kind of chance you have to uh, to block 100% of the damage. Evasion is evading damage, obviously. Reload time, and then all the different types of damages that you can get. All right. Come help. You're saving me, adventurers, and sent from the kingdom. It's kind of weird how he addresses as that. Kellen's Carpenter Ilford. How do I know that you've been sent from the kingdom? Alright, we all know that you've been there. Okay, I mean, he sucks us back out. Hooray! 
and then the dungeon takes our item. So it's important to note that every time you leave the dungeon until you get to like level 20 at least, uh, you will lose all the items that you pick up in the, the dungeon and a significant amount of the gold. So, I was wondering where I'd be able to use this, but the time has finally come. And he opens it and a bajillion swords fly out. Uh, while you're here in the little hub, you can hit the left button here. Or, if you are using keyboard and mouse, it is tab. And you can click on the different ones. So, our first thing is we're just going to jump right back down into the dungeon. Now, in the dungeon, you'll find these boxes. Uh, these little red sparkling things are health. So, they'll stay there. So, even if you're at full health or you're not quite, uh, you know, if you're missing one health, these give you 10 health each. Um, so you can save them for later. Now, when we come into these rooms, we'll kind of get locked in. These little ladies here are sirens. They'll, uh, they'll shoot through blocks, so you kind of have to be careful. Like I totally was not just then. Now archers can shoot through these. Uh, these bats can shoot through them. Uh, it's important to kind of pay attention to the way the different mobs attack. These guys are ghosts. They don't actually attack you. They just kind of come up on you. Now, when you start off, you're pretty weak. So, you know, if you, you die in the first couple rooms, it doesn't matter. But since we saved that health thing, we can hop back here and get it. And then these guys, these little mouths, are uh, secret passages. So you can just click on them and be able to travel back and forth kind of quickly around the dungeon. Hey, hello. Good night. Alright. Nicholas, dude, I'll see you back in town. This is the main boss. You don't really want to come in here until you're prepared. Uh, you can find these chests all over the place. This is a salamander's eye. We're going to switch over to it. It's a pretty neat weapon. It does have a charge, though. So, so this guy here, you'll find him and another person in every single dungeon. Sell you um, items. And so we actually don't have enough money for really anything. We have a rapier we could get. Or we could get yeah, a falx. Might get the falx. And of course, you can just equip, unequip. Uh, you can throw away items. I don't really recommend it. Okay, so there's nothing else in this room. You can kind of see by the uh, little mini map up here. It'll actually pop up if there's a chest or health or gold or anything. You'll actually see it on there. So the big bats you always want to kind of take out first. Uh, or, you know, any of the big mobs, the sirens, all those. They'll, uh, they'll hurt you pretty bad. So this, it looks like you can place something on the altar, but you have no idea what to do it. Uh, that's someone else that we have to save. Now, we can see here on the mini-map. There we go. See that blue dot is us. This is an entrance or exit, and we got a little chest here. So we can actually sneak down. There are some spikes in this room. All right, so then we got another chest. Got us some leather armor. Now these items are just kind of like passive buffs. This one's going to give me 8 defense and 14 gold drop. Alright, and then this is the next person I want to talk to you guys about. This lady is the food lady. And of course you can pay for food at the end, which will give you permanent buffs for that dungeon. So as soon as you die, all the buffs are gone. But... They give you different things. Like this one will give you give me 13 power and 7.4 defense buff. Now you want to try to find this lady as soon as you can in the dungeon, because every new room we take will lower that food bar down on the bottom. Okay, and then we will need to lower it a little bit more before we can actually eat again. So even if we have enough money to buy more food, we can't eat it until our food level has gone down. Okay, let's see. So I think that. Now we can kind of see how none of these rooms have any other arrows pointing off of them. That means that our run is kind of over. So the only thing that we can do is we can come back to this lady. We can see what kind of food we can get. Um, so we can't get this one because that would be over 100. 
but we could get this one. So we definitely want to power up as much as we can, get as much health as we can. And at this point, there's nothing else to do but go face the boss. So we've had a very successful first run um, of the dungeon, just because we've gotten to the boss. But we're going to come in here, and we're going to have to fight a big skeleton. Alright, so he has several different attacks. That's one. Where he shoots these lasers out of his hands. Another one is he does this. You can dodge those. The other one, he shoots these purple balls out of his mouth. <laughs> and so he got us. Um, we don't have very good weapons to start with, so I mean, obviously that's not bad. But our very first run, we leveled up six times. We found somebody, we rescued them. So that was a very successful run. Uh, you can request Yulford to construct buildings. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to move quickly and we're going to go talk to Yulford. Now, it costs a thousand gold just to build the training school. We don't have a thousand gold, obviously. So, what we, the next thing we do is we can just go right back down into mine, or the dungeon. And we'll just run the dungeon enough until we can get enough money to actually build that building. So, basically, it's the same thing every single time. Oh, we got very lucky, our very first room. We're gonna come in here. We are gonna try to buy whatever food we can. We don't have very much money, so we're just gonna buy this one. Okay, you take out the big bats. Take out the archers. The little bats if you can. Pick up whatever gold you can along the way, and you just kinda keep moving through the room. The dungeon. This is a unique mystical pot. You can just throw certain items into it. Um, kind of combine three items that you don't want, and it'll give you a random item on the output. So don't forget, also, if you're using a controller, you can dash with the uh, left bumper. Again, if you are playing on a, control a keyboard and mouse, it's jump, or you can just right click with the mouse. Uh, but again, like I said, I, I prefer using a joypad for this game. But uh, here's our good friend, Croc. We don't have enough money to buy anything, but the blunderbuss is an amazing weapon. If you buy that thing, you're pretty well set. But if we actually hop back in here, you can see how it has a little white line. This means that there's another room right over here. Oh, look at that. We got a blunderbuss. You guys will see why this thing is so good. Oh, hey, look, another lady. She used to run the store. Your adventure sucked into prison. Okay. So we saved Mila. Now, there is no way for you to just leave the dungeon. If you do, you I'm pretty sure you just die. See, so if we run from the dungeon, we'll see what happens here. It counts as a defeat. We lose all our items. Uh, we get to keep a little bit of the gold. Now, these archers aren't that smart. You can actually see them. They'll stop wherever they're aiming at a certain point. And as long as you get out of the way of that, you're fine. Again, that siren was probably the first one you want to get rid of. Alright, and then we also got this platinum bullion. Uh, it doesn't give you anything, it can. It can give you a little buff, but honestly, it's not worth anything other than selling it into the shop. And if we find us a shop before dying, I'll show you why. Now, now things can go very sour very south very quickly in this game aha but perfect we found us our croc and you can go down here and you can sell it for 1666 gold so other than that it has no other purpose so just go ahead and sell it um the ring of midas would actually probably be a good buy but since we're trying to save money uh i wouldn't actually buy anything down You kind of see how he stopped aiming. All the attacks are dodgeable, right? But some of them are just easier to dodge than others. Like this guy has a very annoying attack. But that's okay. We wanted to kind of get out of there anyways. We still saved 3,000 gold. We leveled up again. Oh, no, I'll take it back. We got 2,000 gold. But now that we have enough money, we can quick move over to this guy. We talk to Yulford, and we want him to build us this building. So now we have a training school, and now all these other weapons will start showing up inside the dungeon. 
So then we can also ask him to build the shop if we happen to just have enough gold. And now these items will pop up in the dungeon. Now we can quick move over to this person. So since we already have eight levels. Um, now you can pick whichever one you want, but uh, I usually went for Mystic. At five level, five points into here, you would get uh, items in the shop are thirty percent cheaper. Then cooldown of your skills is decreased by forty percent. But the one that you really want is this one, which will allow you to keep one item every run. Greed will allow you to survive longer in dungeon. You get extra health. You also get extra gold. Um, and then eventually, yes, you get one. A Additional accessory slot. Patience is your defense. Uh, swiftness is, of course, move speed and attack speed. Wrath is how hard you hit. So these are all pretty good ones. Yeah, like I said, I think you really want to get to this one first so you can keep really like it. Because pretty soon here we'll start finding legendary items and you'll want to keep at least one of those. And so you can kind of just get that here. So we won't spend anything right now, but we can go ahead and we'll talk over to the shop and we'll just instantly teleport there. And then here we go. We only have 200 gold, but we can buy us a great sword, cloth armor, or any of these. These will change every single time you come and go. So she might not have anything good right now, but she may in the future. So hopefully that helps everybody out a little bit, starting out on their first couple runs. Uh, it's a very fun game. I really highly recommend it. And um, yeah, so as you go through the dungeon, you'll find more people. Uh, you'll be able to rescue them and then get their buildings after you get some more money. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.